Hi, Stephanie Kwame here from the CAD Academy. And today we're going to talk about our lead dream home project that we're going to be doing using ARCHICAD. And I think the first question you probably have is what is lead? And lead is really about trying to save our environment so that we can leave our children better off than we have been. Unfortunately, uh, our predecessors have less, left us with environmental waste. You can see the the air is full of pollution uh, in big cities and of course we've had oil spills and we basically are not taking good care of our environment and a couple of people in 1996 thought they should do something about it and I think this is great because it shows you that two people could start a, an international movement because that's what happened it turned into an international movement so it doesn't take many people to make change in this world but they did a council called the US Green Council and green really refers to something that saves energy that is well insulated and reusing of materials so that's basically what that's all about and then the council established a rating system called LEED or leadership in energy and environmental design for implementing these wonderful choices and they came up with the rating system so something could be certified by getting 40 to 49 points and platinum by getting 80 points or above and basically it breaks down into eight categories and so we're going to learn a little bit about LEED. The first category is ID and it stands for Innovation and Design and it's worth up to 11 points. And with Innovation and Design a person would have to come up with something very extremely creative over above and beyond or perhaps a new innovative idea for saving energy or uh, making sure we don't pollute. I was going to talk a little bit about, I am going to talk a little bit about these little houses here. These are earthship houses that are just outside of Taos, New Mexico. And years ago, a, uh, people got together and they decided they wanted to not have to plug into the power grid, that they wanted to be self-sustaining and they started a, co a community. And they literally call them earthships. And if you drive in that area they look so strange that they kind of look like little spaceships on earth but they get power from uh, solar power or uh, turbine power and they collect rainwater bring it in and so that would be an inter I mean they're, they, they are you have to give it to them for uh, uh, being green and sustainable It's interesting buildings and when you design something uh, for a lead, it doesn't necessarily have to be real large. You can des uh, design something where you can actually enjoy the outdoor. So a, a smaller building on a larger site would give you more uh, room to enjoy what's already on that site. I love that little um, building with the carport. With the, of course, it would be like a, a very efficient. Uh, either gasoline or it could be an electrical car with that small innovative house and that's really cool so you can do something like that I have a fireplace there because I think always a house should have a fireplace I lived in Denver during a blizzard and that's when I found I really decided we are victims of our own technology without power store doors don't open you don't have anything to keep things cool or hot and you can't heat yourself up in a house when it's freezing below zero outside and you also can't cook anything so that's why a fireplace would always allow you to do both so every house I have will always have a, a fireplace in it. LL is for location and linkage and it's worth 10 points. It's placement of homes in a socially and environmentally responsible ways in relationship to the larger community. We have too many subdivisions like the picture on the lower left where the houses are just packed one on top of another. You really can't even see any trees in there and there's no open green spaces for people to enjoy. And the middle picture is Central Park which was designed in 1857. The, pe the city planners thought ahead enough to decide well these people that live in Manhattan are going to need something really nice here so let's do this park 
and you can see there's buildings right up to the edge just massive uh, amount of people right up to the edge of park and then they have this beautiful park to enjoy and so that was a environmentally responsible thing for them to do back in 1857 also placement of your building on site and letting the uh, and endemic or the plants that are uh, that grow there naturally be part of your landscape is a great idea as well. <clears throat> SS stands for sustainable sites and you can get up to 22 points for that. Sustainable landscapes balance the needs of people and the environment and benefit both. Why not do communal gardens where everybody can have a little small plot you can share vegetables and fruits and the time to market is a little bit longer if you go to the grocery store but if you get it right fresh from the plant just think how wonderful that would be also using native landscaping like we we discussed but how about native landscaping on top of a green roof there's so many in the big in the cities you see so many green roofs happening nowadays and one that's interesting is uh, Mayor Richard Daly did one on top of the city hall but instead of it being like a garden for people to enjoy he actually put in plants and it has a beekeeper and they actually collect honey it's amazing to me sometimes also instead of concrete driveways spec out why not spec out pavers where the rain water can come in and water the earth beneath it and it instead of just running off uh, and uh, doing no good to the soil Frank Lloyd Wright was such a wonderful architect and he's long past but you might want to study him he believed in organic architecture or that buildings should fit in their environment and that is called the waterfall house and nowadays someone might come through and they might say well let's divert that water underground into a little pipe so it doesn't disturb the house so we can build the house or they might divert the water someplace else but Frank Lloyd Wright uh, had the waterfall and the um, the landscaping around it just fit in so great so it all fits in together and that house fits well in that environment WE is water efficiency and that can give you up to 15 points and that's water conservation practices both indoor and outdoors that are built into the home so in other words you spec them out when you build the house Buildings consume 20% of the world's water, and buildings are a big polluter. It's hard to believe you think cars are, but buildings pollute quite a bit as well. So if you install low water use fixtures, like laths and sinks, and uh, these water efficient products can reduce the consumption of water in a house by 15%, they can save energy by 10%, and they will save the owner 12%. So they are they're a win-win for everybody. Installing a solar panel for the water heater helps in energy bills because the water heater takes a lot to heat and cool of our of the house's energy. So that would be a big saving there as well. And of course, installing native plants to use as, uh, to use drip to water or drip system to water. We have the Pima Indians here locally who do Pima cotton, which is a very luxurious long fiber cotton. And they took their irrigation pipes and they actually sunk them a foot underneath the ground by where the roots are so that when they water, they they don't get evaporation. The water doesn't evaporate. And if it's over 100 degrees, you can admit we have evaporation in Arizona. But that uh, helped them conserve water and still produce a, a very fine quality plant. On the lower right, you see a house that's an example of a, how you would collect rainwater from the um, roof and collect it into a cistern. And then that would be called gray water. And you could use that to water plants or you could use it to flush toilets in the house. EA is energy and atmosphere and that's 38 points. That's a lot of points. And it's optimization of energy efficiency in well insulated type building envelope with efficient heating and cooling systems. Unfortunately I think many builders just slap up buildings and they really don't care about that. In Arizona in particular we have uh, the chicken wire houses with a little uh, a bit of foam and or um, a, just a panel of 
polysyrene, and then a chicken wire, and then the stucco. And the R factor is very low, and it leaks like a sieve. And in the summer, the payments for your energy could be higher than your house payment. Over on the right is the U.S. Department of Energy recommended total R values for a new wood framed homes. And basically the R value is the insulation value. So you really want to have a nicely insulated house and it insulates against the heat or the cold. And how about installing programmable thermostats? Nowadays you can actually operate them from your cell phone and you could have them heat or cool the house uh, an hour before you get home and it would be like it had been that way all day long. Seal the heating and the cooling ducts. Use double pane windows for sure. Weather strip every door and everything that goes out and use again the high insulation factor, the R factor. MR stands for material and resources and that is up to worth 16 points. So the reduction of material waste during construction is important and the selection of green products. The building information model program or ARCHICAD that we use allows us to more accurately uh, order materials that we need and contractors love it because they can find interference be uh, problems that they might have before they even start building. So it could be at one point we won't have the dumpster be the first thing that's out on the building site because things are ordered in a more um, accurate manner. You could also do alternative energy efficient wall materials. If you look at the lower left, that is a picture of Rastra. And when my husband and I were building a house in Arizona, we had had a chicken wire house and we decided we wanted something that was energy efficient now. So we looked at a hay bale, we looked at adobe, and adobe is over there on the right. And that's uh, is something that's been used in our area for a long time by the Native Americans as well. And the um, Rastra appealed to us because it had an R factor of 40. Plus, they had these concrete channels. I mean, these channels that you pour concrete through has rebar in it, so it's very, very strong. And it has reused polystyrene in it, so it, it's definitely a green and sustainable material. And we've had it for our house for over 10 years. Love how quiet it is in the house. And uh, it's very efficient in heating and cooling. And don't forget that paints are very toxic. Even after they dry, they can uh, emit toxins. So uh, be sure and spec out non-toxic paints. Carpet, and especially carpet padding, can emit toxins as well. And this is a place where you can get reused materials because they even out of uh, like denim uh, or something like that, you can get uh, carpets and materials made from recycled or reused materials. IEQ is indoor air quality and that is worth 21 points and that's the improvement of air quality by reducing air pollution with Energy Star appliances, installation methods and ventilation measures. And Energy Star is not only uh, on appliances but it's on windows and on anything that helps conserve energy and so that's definitely something to look for. But basically, you could, uh, it's, it's not necessarily the air quality, but you could protect the drinking water with filters, so that improves the indoor environment for sure. Use air filters to remove toxins from the air. And if you're doing like a remodel job, you want to check for, believe it or not, houses with formaldehyde, that emit formaldehyde, carbon monoxide, mold and mildew. They would be called a sick house, and believe it or not, there are houses out there that are sick houses, and so we definitely want to make sure we don't have a sick house. And the last uh, area is AE, awareness and education. So we would want to uh, educate our client on the uh, products and things in the house that are green and sustainable and how to operate and maintain them. And instead of making a book that would have to, you know, a tree might die for uh, making the paper in the book, why not make it into an ebook, an electronic book? <clears throat> Early on in this movement, I was doing a class at the Lawrence School of Technology in Detroit, Michigan, and I was so amazed by the Tubman Student Services Center. It was one of the first buildings I had ever seen that was LEED rated or LEED certified. It's 12,000 square feet and over 60% of the roof is 
green roofs are vegetated. They collect rainwater and it drains into a 10,000 gallon cistern and that's used for toilets and irrigation and they have 120 geothermal wells 300 feet deep that help heat and cool the building. So that way the building can be mostly off-grid. And they have a few of the wells show up in a semicircle uh, in a semicircle a pattern that you can look at and they kind of glow blue at night but they found out they didn't need as many wells and so as we go ahead in the these uh, the green and sustainable movement we can find um, that that things like that that you could only get by with X amount of a geo geothermal well so this is the project it is to build and design a lead dream home and using our BIM package, which is ARCHICAD. By now you've done projects with it, and so you're getting pretty good with it. And so this is one of the last projects we're going to do. And we can make this a project or a contest. We're going to provide instructions for this dream home on the instructor portal, like the lot size, uh, the city code. And we're going to also provide a document called Lead Light with a point system so you can put, uh, you can gain points by doing certain things with your building. And we're going to award a first, second, and third place winners at each school and they'll receive a personalized certificate from the CAD Academy for their wonderful accomplishment. And we're going to have the first place winners enter into a national competition and they are going to get some grand prizes which we will announce later. Learning about LEED is very important. Uh, right now, most architectural firms, and especially the large ones, have at least one certified LEED expert in, on staff. And that means that person studied and took a test, and he's very knowledgeable about LEED because customers do care, just like you care about our environment and saving our environment for our children. So that's what we're up to. That's the project. And we'll get out a little bit more information on that as we go. And thank you for listening.